Paulette Jabara Farah was a disabled five-year-old girl born in Mexico. But on March the 21st, 2010, a day that seemed like every other, the lives of all of her loved ones around her were completely turned upside down. Paulette lived with her sister Lisette, father Mauricio, and mother Lisette. They had just returned home from a trip to Val de Bravo. Lisette stayed up late to put her daughters to bed, but the following day, on March the 22nd, 2010, the horror truly hit. The family had two nannies, also sisters, Erica and Martha Casimiro. On this fateful morning, Erica attempted to wake up Paulette, but was unable to find her in her bed. She quickly alerted her mother, who then helped to search the building. Her father, who had left for work earlier that morning, was soon informed and promptly contacted the authorities. Very quickly, the mayor was contacted, as was the Attorney General of State of Mexico, Alberto Basbars. The entire apartment was searched, which only led to further confusion. The locks were perfectly intact. There were no broken windows or doors, no evidence of forced entry, and no sign of theft or kidnapping. Furthermore, Paulette had a major motor and language disability and would have found it almost impossible to have left on her own accord. Very quickly, posters and photos of the missing child were released to the public, with Lisette and Mauricio both pleading on television for her to be returned even offering for the exchange to take place in a public or crowded place, reassuring the abductor that no consequences would be faced if they were to oblige. Flyers were handed out, she appeared on billboards, television ads, she was advertised on public transport. However, things during the investigation just didn't seem right. On March the 29th, Paulette's parents were put on a restriction order, as were both of the nannies due to inconsistencies in their witness statements. Each one of them at a certain moment have falsified their statements which has made it difficult to know the truth of the facts and clarify a firm line of investigation. The next day the parents were interrogated and sent away to stay at a hotel to prevent contaminating any potential evidence. Meanwhile blankets were placed at their home to try to recreate the abduction. The next morning at around 2am investigators entered the home with cameras to film a recreation of the missing person story. They began by taking measurements of Paulette's bed before noticing some blood under the blanket and removing it to discover the dead body of Paulette Farah wedged between the bed frame and the mattress. She had been there the entire time. There were two segments of some rectangular adhesive cloth on both of her cheeks with signs of a blow to both her left elbow and knee, but there were no further signs of any physical or sexual violence. The autopsy concluded that she had died between five to nine days before the body had been discovered. She had slept with an orthopedic cloth over her mouth, which had often been done to try to prevent her from sleeping with her mouth open. She had eaten at least five hours before her death and it was concluded that the body hadn't been manipulated after she died. No drugs were found in her system, so it was believed that she had simply moved on the bed herself before falling into the space at the foot of the bed and suffocating, remaining hidden for nine days. However, both nannies insisted that it was impossible that the body was under that mattress the entire time during the initial search. I looked in the bathroom, under the bed and in the closet. I saw that she was not there and I also went into the bedroom of the parents to look for her, to the bedroom of the other girl and from there, we started looking for her again. And I went back to look for her in the bedroom. In fact, if it had been like that, I think we would have noticed since thousands of people came to look for her. The bed was made, I never saw the mattress pulled back, I did not see a bundle or anything. It does not make sense to me that the body could have been there since Monday. Even stranger, family friend Amanda De La Rosa actually stayed in the apartment for several days after the disappearance. She had even slept inside Paulette's room, which wasn't secured by investigators at the time. The child's bed was made on a daily basis and nobody seemed to notice the trapped body or the blood on the sheets, which led to Amanda herself becoming a suspect, but no charges were pressed. On April the 3rd, Lisette filed an Amparo proceeding against the restriction order, denying any involvement in her daughter's death. The next day, both parents and nannies were allowed to walk free, but weren't granted permission to leave the country. By the 5th, Paulette's mother accused her father of murdering their child, while he accused her in return. 
Mauricio refused to accept that it was an accident and admitted that he didn't trust his wife. On April the 6th, Paulette's body was buried and though Lisette attended her daughter's funeral, no member of Mauricio's family did. Even stranger, the next day his family also refused to visit their own daughter. Furthermore, once the video of the investigators discovering the body was released, it only caused further problems. As they entered the room, they narrated the actions for the recreation, but one claimed she was severely beaten before the body was even found. Furthermore, neither expert seemed particularly surprised to discover the dead body of a child. In addition to the bizarre time of shooting a recreation at a crime scene at two in the morning. However, Bazbars claimed that the video itself proved that it was nothing more than an accident. By May the 10th, after Lizette Farah filed a complaint demanding custody of her other daughter, she was finally granted it. But on the 26th, Baz Baz actually resigned as Attorney General of the State of Mexico, as he was constantly being questioned for his actions on the case, and had simply lost all of his confidence in his own line of work. The plot would only thicken when a recording between Lizette and her other daughter was leaked, in which she tells her to not say anything about her sister's disappearance. Once she asks her mother, Why not? She replies, Because otherwise they will blame us for stealing her or that you took her away to be stolen. Lizette initially denied the recording and claimed that it was fake, but she later admitted that she did say it, but that it was edited out of context. To make matters worse for her, she had recorded an interview just days before the body was discovered, pleading for the abductor to return her daughter. There were some pyjamas. The very same pyjamas that would later be found on Paulette's lifeless body. Lizette claimed that these had belonged to her other daughter and that she actually had two pairs. But this mysterious second pair of pyjamas were never found. On May the 3rd, 2017, Paulette's body was actually exhumed from her grave and cremated, as it was no longer considered an object of evidence, leaving her ashes, family, friends, and the world forever seeking answers.